uh, we have to uh, just take a very simple look at the the legal world. It's like one big company that operates. Uh, it operates independently at times through different governments, but they're really all part of the same uh, control factor. So uh, because the legal system is operated by lawyers and they are everywhere. They're all over the world and they represent Satan as the devil's advocates. Uh, when you uh, look up the, the word company, it has an interesting meaning. It says group sharing bread, companionship society. So the, uh, the birth registration system uh, does not register people, it registers events. So you're not, you're not part of their membership um, for that reason. I always hear people argue that they're part of the government and that's not really the case because you can talk to or call government legal services in each of these different countries worldwide. They're all going to say the same thing, that they don't give legal advice to the public, um, only to a separate government that's not really part of the people. So the legal system was never for you because God never put it there for you. This legal system is run by the opposite, the opposer, the accuser, Satan. So this is his sandbox, and therefore it's his company. We can call it the synagogue of Satan, as spoken of in Revelation. So these guys are tricksters, and uh, they're spoken of um, in different places. Of course, the Bible, especially for people that are going into courts. Of course, we've talked about the surname, and I've already mentioned that the minute you walk in, and state that surname you've already said you're the debtor in their world because they need a debtor to pay the bill so we look at uh isaiah 29 verse uh, 21 it says talking about the evil it says who cause a person speaking of evil who cause a person to be indicted by a word and ensnare him who adjudicates at the gate and defraud the one in the right with meaningless arguments. So we uh, we can we've uh, read this before. It's uh, in a very very uh, uh, distant video I've done in the past uh, dealing with woe unto ye lawyers. And Matthew Henry's commentary he has some interesting comments. I'm not saying that uh, that it's infallible as commentary. I'm just saying that there are some. Uh, very interesting points that he makes uh, that you can research that are valid with scripture. And so when he's commenting on woe unto ye lawyers for you take away the key of knowledge, uh, he's pointed here uh, when he comments on his first beginning commentary on that scripture is, they keep up the trade as it were in succession, speaking of the lawyers, and therefore are responsible for the debts of the company. Interesting wording there that they're responsible for the debts of the company. He's talking about the legal company. He's talking about the world that is away from God and spirituality that's dealing with their made up artificial make believe world that they've induced people to participate in. That to the point that they actually believe that they are really a member and that they have ownership and control. All they have picked up is ownership to a debt because they have no grace. So uh, there was a book written in 1939 by a law professor. Another thing you can check out when you have the moment. It's written by Fred Rodell, professor of law, Yale University. And in the book's entitled, Woe unto ye lawyers, quoting out of Luke chapter 11. The introductory to the book reads as follows. He says, no lawyer will like this book. It is, written, it is not written for lawyers. It is written for the average man, and its purpose is to try to plant in his head at least a seed of skepticism about the whole legal profession. It works, its works and its ways. In case anyone should be interested, I got my own skepticism early. Before I ever studied law, I used to argue occasionally with lawyers, a foolish thing to do at any time. When, as frequently happened, they couldn't explain their legal points so that they made any sense to me, I brashly began to suspect that maybe they didn't make any sense at all, but I couldn't know. One of the reasons I went to law school was to try to find out. At law school, I was lucky. 
Ten of the men under whom I took courses were sufficiently skeptical and commonsensible about the branches of law they were teaching, so that unwittingly, of course, they served together to fortify my hunch about the phoniness of the whole legal process. In a sense, they are the intellectual godfathers of this book, and though all of them were doubtless strenuously disowned their godchild, I think I owe it to them to name them. Listed alphabetically, they are Thurman Arnold, now Assistant Attorney General of the United States, Charles E. Clark, now Judge of the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, William O. Douglas, now Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Felix Frankfurter, now Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Leon Green, now Dean of the Northwestern University Law School, Walton Hamilton, Professor of Law at Yale University, Harold Lasky, Professor of Political Science at the London School of Economics, Richard Joyce Smith, now a practicing attorney in New York City, Wesley Sturgis, now director of the Distilled Spirits Institute, and the late Lee Tulin. By the time I got through law school, I had decided that I never wanted to practice law. I never have. I am not a member of any bar. If anyone should want, not unreasonably, to know what on earth I'm doing or trying to do teaching law, he may find a hint of the answer toward the end of chapter 9. When I was mulling over the notion of writing this book, I outlined my ideas about the book and about the law to a lawyer who is not only able, but also extraordinarily frank and perceptive about his profession. Sure, he said, but why give the show away? That clinched it. So remember, you're surrounded by this group of tricksters, legalists, and we're walking into their sandbox. You've gone in there by consent. And when you walk in with consent, equity will not support a volunteer because the only reason you'd be there is based on the fact that you believe you are a member that is suing in the name that you're using. And therefore, the burden of proof is always placed upon you, not upon them anymore, because you've come in with the last name. And last in law, and blacks will tell you it means burden. So the burden now is on you, and the joke is on you, because you really don't have any legal entitlement, you're just suing for the point of suing to prove it.